Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototypus Mystery. This will be part 241 in our series. The title is Prelude to the Beginning of Sorrows. Prelude to the Beginning of Sorrows, the things building up that will culminate in the judgment that the Lord will pronounce on the human race. Turn to <clears throat> the book of Zephaniah, second chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 to 5. As we read Zephaniah, we're going, to press it. we're going to preface this with a principle. Scripture indicates before the worldwide judgment to fall on the human race, the nation of Israel, which is currently engaged in war over there, will reap much destruction on the enemy nations around her. She's not going to <coughs> be pressured by the world She's going to hurl everything she has at her enemies. Then there will be a, an intervention. Zephaniah, second chapter, verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass, as the chaff before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So he's addressing the nations that are going to come under judgment. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Jeremiah, we're going to come back to Zephaniah. Jeremiah 25, verse 31. <coughs> Actually, we'll do just do verse 30. Therefore prophecy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. Zephaniah is addressing these nations. The human race, its tribes, its language, its cultural groups, everybody in here is going to be the object of this judgment. He's addressing them before then. He's telling them, <clears throat> you better repent while you have time, because when this judgment is pronounced, that's it. Okay. Now turn back to Zephaniah, and you see the nations that he's addressing. <clears throat> Zephaniah 2, we're going to go to... Uh, Verse 4. It says, uh, For Gaza shall be forsaken. The word forsaken there comes from a Hebrew term, azab, it means abandoned. It's exactly what's taking place over there. What is Ashkelon? 
Uh, it's around that area. Okay. All of these are the cities in that, in that area. Ashkelon, the desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday. And Ekron shall be rooted up. So all that region, Israel is going to devastate. Why? Because uh, <coughs> the, uh, the terrorists are using it to uh, combat Israel. So this is going to do a lot of damage in the very near future. Woe well, unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. Now many people believe that the Palestinians are the present descendants of the Philistines whose land that was in the time of the Bible. Gaza, uh, Eshkelon, all that region was the Philistine area. Did you say many people believe that? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the authorities feel, oh, you can't trace the descendants of the Philistines. They seem to have disappeared. Well, the Bible says they're here. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. So all we said before, all those people are going to be driven out because Israel is going to occupy and dominate all that region. Turn to Jeremiah 48. We're going to read verses 40 to 42. <coughs> but thus saith the Lord, Behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. Moab is right south of uh, Israel on the other side of the Jordan River in Jordan. Over Moab. <coughs> Kiriath is taken and the strongholds are surprised and the mighty men's hearts in Moab in that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pain. And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he hath magnified himself against the Lord. Let me wipe down. All that land is going to be cleared for <coughs> the bringing in of the twelve tribes, the ten tribes. Does the Quran discuss any of this? No. <laughs> Would they? They're not, they're not going to put their people in this kind of a light. <laughs> Beside that, it's nothing but a tissue of man-made fabrication. Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't spend my time pursuing that in light of what we have here. I'm sounding like a newborn babe. You can't <laughs> believe that <laughs> these people don't know this. So. You know, I, I, the picture I get is the, that, that big black building that... The, the oh, the cube. cube. So, <coughs> thousands, millions of people constantly, they're just, you know, they're doing what they, they're, they're putting, they're, they're, they're so continuously, and you can depend on them to be on time and do all this stuff, and they're doing it all because of man's in, divisive. The Sumerian influence. Yes. And it's, they, they circle it constantly, yeah. constantly, yeah. constantly, and then they break for the prayers, you know. Thing of it is, is they're, they've committed their lives, and their and men have sold their souls. Sure. Men go into eternity believing a lie. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeremiah forty nine twenty three to twenty seven.
But before that, we'll do verses 20 to 22, Jeremiah 49. 20 to 22. Here we have Edom, whose capital city is Teman. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord, he that hath taken against Edom, and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock, twelve tribes, Israel the least, shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise or the sound of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. It sounds like an atomic mm. hit. Yes. Now you would say, well, how could Israel drop an atomic bomb? They're right across the water from them. Well, the idea is Israel has neutron bombs. Neutron bombs don't spread radiation. Okay. They just wipe out people. Mm. And you leave, they say you can drop a neutron bomb and go in and occupy the, the buildings right away. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. <clears throat> and at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. <clears throat> so, the capital of Jordan, Amman, <clears throat> which is the home of the Ammonites. You have all those tribes intermingled there. The Palestinians, you have the um, Heshemites, you have all of these intermingled in this one area. They have their own little sections and stuff, but there's multiple teeming tens of thousands of them. And they all have one thing and hold them together in common, the hatred for Israel. Then we go, huh? Who's the least of the flock in verse 20? Judah. That's right. This is Judah. Judah, okay. Judah. And is Benjamin with him? No, Levi is with him. Levi. Benjamin, Joseph, all the rest of them are out, outside. They're going to be gathered back. You only got two tribes there, Judah and Levi. Okay, I was thinking for some reason that Benjamin was, was left with it. it, it no. mm. Then you go to Damascus. Verse 23, concerning Damascus, <laughs> Amoth is confounded, he's talking about the cities around him. Amoth is confounded in Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings, they are faint-hearted, there is sorrow on the sea, it cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed feeble, and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath seized on her, anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle that fire in the wall of Damascus. It shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad is the king of uh, Damascus, which would be um, the, the guy that would be heading, uh, heading uh, Syria now. <coughs> Assad. <coughs> oh, okay. So what's happening is the inference is that they've heard that Jordan has been nuked. It's, uh, Israel has embarked on the Samson option. Going to take out all the regions around her before she allows them to come down upon her. And these guys are all going to get taken. That's part of the judgment that God allows it to take place. Is there any indication that we will see a repeat of the godly hand or any supernatural effect or will this all be done in a humanly natural manner? I get news, it's already happening. People are seeing angels and stuff over there now. That's where the soldiers are starting to sing praises to okay. Jehovah. Right. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Verse 20. This is exciting. So Mr. Jones, yes, sir. Where it says our God and have his praise. Is that for Elohim and YHVH? Uh, yes. Yes. YHVH would send over the Levites across Jordan. His presence would go with them. He's the one that wiped out the enemies as they sang praises. <coughs> Elohim more so. 
Let's go on. Um, we're going to take your favorite people, Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Scripture indicates the Lebanese, Hezbollah, will undergo a judgment. Now get this, from Elohim and a judgment from YHVH. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Do they happen at the same time? No, but it happens pretty close. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to see how this is coached. Ezekiel 32, verse 30. Give me the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians. Now, the Zidonians are the Lebanese people right. uh, who worshipped a, uh, a god um, I forget his name, but uh, of course it was Satan. And what happened, King Ahab married a Zidonian woman named Jezebel, incorporated into Israel right. all her gods. Yes, yes. Totally understand. corrupted the nation. <clears throat> all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain, with their terror, they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. So the inference in scripture here is that these guys are going to be <clears throat> wiped out in humility. And they're going to go into eternity uh, in a state of shame at their, at their condition. Because if you listen to them now, it's all a braggadocious clamoring about how much they're going to wipe out Israel and all the stuff they're going to do. And uh, <clears throat> with the help of Allah, they're going to trounce Israel and do all this stuff. But the end is going to be radically different. Now what you find here, this is Elohim, <coughs> which <coughs> is referring to their condition. The princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain. Now, what does that mean? The Zidonians are gone down with the slain with their terror. They are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that are slain by the sword. Bear the shame with them. Now, why is he consistently talking about shame and all the rest of it? Because <laughs> the inference, this is the way I see this, is that they're going to go down bodily with their weapons of war. And they're going to come crashing down, pinned in the torment regions around their vaunted <coughs> weaponry and be a gazing stock. <coughs> the essence of this is that their pride is going to be broken, they're going to be humiliated, and then brought down to a place where they become um, terrified. At their surroundings because there's no way in the world they ever imagined that this could happen to them. When the Lord speaks, Jeremiah 25 30, one of his pronouncements of judgment is going to be against them. So we understand the shame to be they recognize, eyes open, let's say, they're in uh, Sheol in hell holding their weapons, they didn't use them. Yep. And the shame comes from the fact that they realized they didn't use their weapons. They had to eat their words. Okay. They, you know, strutted their stuff and uh, made everybody realize who they were. And they got their balloon deflated very quickly. Don't they ask at this point, where is Allah? Where's, where's, <laughs> I don't uh, think they're thinking about him. <laughs> now we're going to see where White's Rage comes in, because White's Rage comes in right after this. Okay. Turn to Ezekiel 28. You're going to find this very interesting. Ezekiel 28, 20 to 26.
Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon. Prophecy against this is the Zidonians. What's looking at them as a nation. Say, thus say. Huh? Sorry. Yeah. So would you say Lebanon then for Zidon? Or would you say Hezbollah for Zidon? Well, Hezbollah is a group of people within Lebanon, so this incorporates the whole country. So you would say Lebanon? Yes. Right. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon, and prophecy against it. Now notice what it says here. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall have executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. <clears throat> For I will send unto her pestilence and blood unto her streets, and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side. They shall know that I am the Lord. Now, <clears throat> let's go back and take a look at this. Just before you go back, uh -huh. how can we discern between YHVH, which we previously read, and this which I understand to be Elohim? No, we just read this Elohim. Is, this oh, I'm YHVH. sorry, I got it the wrong way around. Yeah. Okay. You say, well, how do you know it's YHVH? It's only YHVH is always trying to get recognition. Yes, yeah, so now I understand. Number one. Number two. No. It says, again, the word of the Lord. The word, every time you see the word of the Lord, it's Logos. That's Elohim. Mm. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying. <coughs> so the word comes to the word comes to Ezekiel. It's instruction for Ezekiel to pin a judgment. What is he saying? Again the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon and prophecy against it. So Elohim is telling Ezekiel to write, pronounce a prophecy against Zidon. Now, notice what he's saying. And say, Thus saith the Lord God. That's why it's VH. Okay. So what you're going, this is unique. You have Elohim telling the prophet to make a prophecy that YHVH has spoken, not him, mm. not Elohim. Why? Because YHVH is going to be in charge of putting down all this stuff and bringing the tribes back into the land okay. under Elohim. Okay. Now that makes sense. <clears throat> and of course it goes on to say, drop down to uh, verse 23. This is all white VH, for I will send to her pestilence and blood into her streets. The wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her every side. They shall know that I am the Lord. There shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel. In other words, they're not going to be a pain in Israel's side, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them that despise them. They shall know that I am the Lord God. So he's talking about all this pronunciation that they've been doing against Israel, all the taunting, all the headaches they've been trying to give Israel. They're going to be taken out of the way totally. They're not going to be there anymore. This is going to be free to expand into all this territory. Yeah. Now, when these nations mm -hmm. against Israel see these angels and supernatural beings in and around in the skies, how do they read these signs? They're not going to be focusing in that direction. Okay. Understand, they're under the Luciferian influence. They're being directed, number one, by hatred. Mm -hmm. Vitriolic hatred. And that's what's fo the, the full focus of them. Number two, they're under judgment. So they're not operating objectively. They're now under a thing that's taking them to hell. Okay. 
unique situation, but it's a pronouncement from the Lord. We're looking here at, an, at, at, an, at a unique situation. When God speaks, when His Word goes forth, that's it. There is no if, ands, or buts. There's no manipulate. That's it. Whatever He said, if He said, Zidon, you're going to hell, and that's what He tells uh, Ezekiel, cast them down. So that's what He's going to speak. Whoever, hit, whoever gets hit by that word, down He's going to go. Lebanon, uh, all these people that you see in Ezekiel 32, the word has taken them directly to hell. That's the judgment. YHVH comes up later on and he wipes out, kills, maims, or whatever it is. Their souls go down to hell. But for the most part, these guys are going down bodily. So they're going down with their weapons, holding their weapons. That's the word of Elohim. Yeah. So when you say their whole their souls go immediately to hell, is is it just God appointed, or is there an angel? No, no, no. That's the word. Oh, so you mean angels carrying them? Yeah. Them, guiding them. They're no, not guided. Then. No. He, no. The power of the word is just yes, sir. opening the earth and down you go bodily with your. Burka weapons and rockets and missiles or whatever else you happen to have. It's gone now with you. Mm. First time that you, you see the power of the spoken word of El, El, El Yon. If he can speak and the universe can come into being, yeah. <laughs> what is this? But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates direct conditions of the torment region contacts countries when then the whole human race. Okay, what we have here <clears throat> the reality of hell is going to become real first on a countrywide basis and later on uh, from a human a whole human perspective they're going to see participate in the reality of hell. <clears throat> so in Jeremiah 48 verse 43 And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people, because he hath magnified himself against the Lord. Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. So the reality of hell, which is going to be their resting place, <coughs> becomes apparent to them. Hell basically is going to connect at that point with those that are under this judgment. And uh, remember, the earth is not a planet, it's a matrix. They're going to be brought into a conditions of a, of a connecting reality and a parts of the reality of hell. Torment, pain, suffering, in addition to death to these people. Will the people of one nation in the Torment regions be able to see the peoples of other nations? Sure. Okay. And hear them too. Mm. <clears throat> but uh, depending upon what the conditions of Torment are, they won't be able to intermix because they're going to be pinned to one place. Okay. Now notice the difference. Isaiah 24... <clears throat> Verses 17 to 19. This happens later on. 
but it happens on a planetary scale. <coughs> The air in the pit, in the snare, same thing they said about Moab. The air in the pit and the snare are upon the inhabitant of the earth, okay. the human race. And so come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The connectors that are separating these compartments going to be taken down and <clears throat> the whole human race is going to be um, exposed to the conditions of hell. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is a basic uh, inset into some of the changes that are going to take place when the judgment is pronounced. Is this here in verse 17 that we're reading equal to Jeremiah 25, 30? Um, well, it would be a result of Jeremiah 25, okay. 30. Jeremiah 25, 30 sets up the conditions, <clears throat> but there's still restraints that are not totally taken down until Isaiah 17. Right. Matthew 25. And I can't emphasize this enough. In Matthew 24. Where we going? Matthew 24. <coughs> Verse 42. 43. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have suffered he would have watched, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in an hour, such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now this is of course referring to the gathering, but it also <clears throat> is germane to the judgment because he's suddenly going to speak. When he speaks, those that aren't ready are going to be become victims of the judgment. Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you a hypothetical. Let's say I'm riding a motorcycle and the voice happens. I'm going to be pulling over as soon as I can, you know, I mean, but that's not going to interfere with what happens with me, right? No, no. There'll be a million different situations taking place simultaneously. The judge is going to be spoken. Remember, it says he will give them that are evil to judgment. So in that respect, they're talking about <clears throat> all this collapsing of uh, the, the order and uh, chaos in the cities and all the rest of that. Yes, that's true. But the judgment says it's going to fall on all the evil. So all these people that are out here doing wicked and all the rest of it, they're going to be under a judgment. <clears throat> We're going to be free. Because, bless God, if we do what we're supposed to do, we'll be accounted worthy to escape what everybody else is going to be experiencing. you got to believe that. Watch what's going on in Israel. You see Israel becoming more and more and more aggressive. <clears throat> more and more people rising up against her. Then you know that the time is short.